Hi, I'm Ross Campbell. Welcome to Genry Digital Dialogues Face to Face. In this series, we talk to innovators and thought leaders who are helping us to shape the insurance of the future. And today, I'm joined by Professor Ulrik Wisloff. He's the inventor of Personal Activity Intelligence, or PI. It's an algorithm and a program that helps prolong life and prevent disease. Welcome, Ulrik. Thank you. Perhaps you could start by just telling us a little bit about how you got involved in developing Pi. I'm based in Trondheim in Norway at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And I became involved in Pi by having an idea that was spinning around in my head for many years, where I wanted to make sense of heart rate as a metric for physical activity. And the knowledge gap in my head was that the media was giving all kind of quick fix to how to exercise and, and, and so on. And people got demotivated by that and they got confused. And those that actually needed exercise the most, they, they didn't start or they quit because it was too complicated. So the idea was to make a sense of heart rate because all scientists, all medical doctors agree that heart rate is reflecting how your body is, uh, is responding to the physical activity that you undertake. So that was the point of departure for that. How did you go about validating your thoughts? We have this fantastic population-based study in Norway called the HUNT study that some research pioneers started in the mid-80s. And they invited the whole population in a certain part of Norway and they actually got 90% of the inhabitants to participate in the study and they did a complete checkup on their health. And this study has been undertaken every 10 years since that time. So we have now we have data on 120,000 people where we have the medical background, we have their family history, we, have, we know what they have been eating, how they have been exercising, and we also have complete disease and death registers in Norway, so we, we know what happened with them. So around 2007, my group undertook a part of this HUNT 3 study, a study called HUNT Fitness, where we invited 5,000 people to do exercise on a treadmill, where we measured their cardiorespiratory fitness, we measured their heart rate, and we, we had all kind of information how they did exercise and, and so on. And that's where we invented the, the, the PI algorithm. We saw that people that had a certain heart rate pattern over a week, they had good health, and people that had a different heart rate pattern, they didn't have that good health. We also had these data from the mid 80s. So we went back to the 80s. We were plotting the data for these uh, people taking part in the 80s. And then we looked, okay, how did it go with them in the future? And we were able to validate the pi algorithm. So, so those that had 100 pi, uh, they were actually safe. And those that had less than 100 pi, they had the much higher risk of dying uh, early compared okay. to those other guys. Underpinning the scoring and everything else is is your cardiorespiratory fitness. That's true. And cardiorespiratory fitness, that is measured as maximal oxygen uptake. It, it says something about how good the lungs are to breathe in oxygen, how good they are to transport the oxygen to the blood, how good the heart is to pump the blood out to the vessels, and how good the blood vessels are to transport it to the muscles, and finally how good the muscles are to utilize the oxygen to produce energy. So it's, a, it's a very important number, and it has been shown to be the single best predictor of, of future health. One of the secrets behind PI is that it's really closely linked to, to cardiorespiratory fitness. So if, if you maintain a PI score above 100, you sooner or later will get good age-specific uh, fitness level. So maintaining a good level of PI scoring, what is the benefit? Yeah, the benefit, what we showed in, in the beginning was that, okay, those that obtained this magic number 100 PI, they had good cardiovascular health. Because of the, the design of the hand studies, we were able to check did they live longer. And we found that they lived on average five to six years longer. And those that benefit the most, they actually live more than uh, 10 years longer than those that did not have 100 pi per week. So it's quite strong data. We had, have about 10,000 people that died in the material. So it's, it's not just a random number, it's, it's, uh, it's for real. So is it sometimes just then too late for a person to improve their, their cardiorespiratory fitness? The easy answer to that is that it's never too late. We, we were studying people aged actually 13 to, to 92 and all uh, aged groups could uh, improve their fitness level. So that's, that's never too late. Insurance consumers are familiar with engagement 
and rewards programs that, that tend to favour measuring steps, for instance, or other physical activity they might associate mm. with um, visiting the gym and so mm. on. Mm. How does a person go about earning pi? Just to be clear on that, I favour all types of physical activities, but those measures are vague and inaccurate. In our clinics, we saw people that did 20,000 steps per day, but their fitness level was really bad. And some people did much less and had a good fitness level. So that's also the ba- one of the basis is for developing pi and making a sense of heart rate. In 10,000 steps, if you walk uphill, it's really hard, and that's perhaps enough to earn 100 pi if you do that every day for a week. Or if you work on a flat surface, it's certainly not enough. And also people are tired of getting the failure message that you, you didn't reach your goal of 10,000 steps today. And I lived in Australia for a year and they were cycling and swimming a lot and they, they didn't get any steps at all. <laughs> but still, they, they were fit. So how does the Pi algorithm uh, learn about the individual uh, and how does it become personalized? Yeah, so it's an algorithm that is based upon heart rate pattern over a week but it's highly dependent upon resting heart rate and maximal heart rate and the response to the exercise in between those uh, limits it's important to say that we found that if you follow today's advice for physical activity given by health authorities worldwide and you did not reach 100 pi you were not on the safe side also opposite if you did not fulfill today's advice for physical activity but had 100 pi or above you were on the safe side so, so i think it's a much more precise measure than today's advice. It's easier to understand for people. And also we know that the number one reason not to undertake physical activity is lack of time. The research clearly shows that you don't need to exercise every day. You need a certain amount per week to protect your own health. And that means that you can put pie points in the, in the bank. And uh, so, so you can plan your week according to your busy lifestyle or family life. So if you have two days per week that you can do exercise, that's enough. The higher intensity you do, the easier you get 100 uh, pi points, but you can choose to do low intensity, but then you have to do much more in terms of times. So. What was your experience when people were engaged with pi in terms of, of them continuing to use it? The experience were very, very positive because we managed to reach people that, normal people, I mean, this pie is not uh, designed for athletes, but it's designed for people that are on average, or average people or even deceased people. The response was that pie was really motivating for them and it was something they could do over a week. It was motivating that they got this message that, okay, tomorrow you will lose 20 pie points, you have to fill up your bank account again. And I think that's uh, one of the motivations that uh, is important in the pie system. Uh, and what if I'm the sort of person who finds that the activities I am able to do are not going to create a hundred pi? Should, should I just give up? or what should no, I do? no, you should not give up. But our experience is that most people can uh, reach hundred pi. That said, we, we, we didn't see much health benefit of people getting less than 50 pi, but it was a huge benefit from getting 51 to 99 pi. So if you reach above 50 pi, and I'm 100% sure that every person on the planet can do that every week, then it's good for their health. I'm, I'm also quite sure that some people will be very keen to score way in excess of 100 pi and presumably assume that that's even more beneficial. Is that correct? We didn't see any benefit or additional benefit of getting 200 pi compared to 100 pi when it came to longevity. But of course we saw that the more pi you have, the higher the cardiorespiratory fitness goes. So of course you get other health benefits, but in terms of longevity, it was no benefit of having more than 100 pi. If I'm having my CRF estimated or measured in a clinical setting, I'm assuming that there's, there's quite a lot of equipment required. In terms of the PI score estimating my CRF using a, a wearable, is, is it as accurate? For health purposes, for health personnel, for you and me, it's more than accurate enough. And we also developed that on, based upon the HUNT study, and it has been confirmed in studies in the US. And it's more than accurate enough for, for health purposes. Obviously, viewers are going to be interested in how you visualise Pi working in life and health insurance. And I just wondered if you had a, a vision around how you might see Pi being involved in the kinds of products we provide to our customers. We have realised that if you're going to influence the world's health, we should really collaborate with the insurers because they reach many, many more people than we can uh, 
dream of. And what sort of partnerships uh, are useful to further the research that you're doing in maybe scientific and commercial fields? We are running a study now where we're actually using PI in, uh, in patients with, uh, that has undergone a myocardial infarction. And we'll treat them with PI for three to five years and we will see, will it prevent, prevent them from getting a new myocardial infarction? Will they prolong their life? That is one thing, but it's also would have been of high interest to join forces with an insurance company to see how does it really influence people's health and, and uh, behavior. So what future research is in the pipeline? We have a lot of plans and some of them are uh, up in my head still, but, but um, we are trying to combine several types of vital signs. So, so how can PI influence uh, your mental status, your sleep status, and how can we monitor this and give the best uh, advice uh, to the right people at the right time? There is this idea then that, that exercise is actually beneficial across a wider spectrum uh, and influences perhaps the way you sleep and the way you deal with uh, things from a cognitive perspective. Is, is, is that the kind of thing you're looking at now? We're looking at that as well. And I think, again, the, the reason we are on the planet is that because oxygen became available and, and every single cell in all organs need the oxygen. That's why I think uh, physical activity that improve cardiovascular fitness actually benefit many systems in, including the cognitive and uh, thanks so much Ulrich it's been a real pleasure talking to you uh, and learning more about pi pi has the potential to really influence the way people's health develops uh, and this is of real interest to insurance companies uh, from what we've heard this is something that can benefit everybody regardless of their fitness level e even if they already have uh, suffered from something as dramatic as a heart attack so it's going to be really interesting to see how we can bring this in to uh, insurance solutions around the world. So look out for more short films in this series and thank you very much for watching.